This is LVWS Confidential. I'm Gerald Bentley, and tonight we are joined by the new belt collector of professional wrestling, your United Wrestling Network heavyweight champion, and your new FSW No Limits champion, the radioactive poppy, Danny Limelight. Gerald, what's oh, going on, man? Listen, you forgot I'm also the VWE SoCal champion, all right? I got wow. three. I know, I know it might be hard for you to count with your glasses, <laughs> on, but there's three here for a reason because I'm the radioactive pop and I'm just out here doing as I please with everybody's championships. That's a lot of belts. It is. It's not enough, though. It's not, You're raking them up. Well, I'm going to do this. It's not, it's, not <laughs> enough. it's not enough. I don't even know where to put them. It's not no, enough. You got your waist still and... I you do. can I go ahead and get some shelves. Yeah. My Load them up. I'm in the process yeah. of moving. I'm in the process of moving to a new beautiful apartment in Los Angeles. You know, okay. I got all my shit everywhere. I'm still out here doing what I do best, and that's winning championships and looking good doing it. Yeah. Well, you had a big week. You I just did. went against one of your old tag team partners, Matt Vandergraff. Yes. And took that new limits title. How did my you feel partner. about going up against your old partner? You know, I'm going to tell you one thing about Matt Vandergriff, the aerial chemist. You know, we used a team a while back on the SoCal scene. He, he, he was uh, very talented back then. He's even more talented now. I'm not going to take that from him. But the fact of the matter is he must have not learned nothing teaming with me. He must have not learned anything. Because if he did, he would have known that anything is possible. And Danny Limelight always wins ugly. You got to watch your back when you're in the ring with me. I'll take any chance that I get to get what I want, which is more gold and more money. That's well, a, you know, a win's a win, right? It is a win. Winning ugly. doesn't matter. It says W and new. Now, did you guys did you guys wrestle together extensively? Yes, you know, and uh, I would say around 2018, 2019, me and Matt was wrestling each other all over Southern California, Mexico, Vegas. We was teaming all over Southern California. You know, we was really, really you know, every time we wrestled, fans were throwing money in the ring and stuff like that. Cheap. Cheap fans, they would throw five dollars, ten dollars, one dollars. I was waiting for somebody to throw a twenty or a hundred, but what can you expect with these fans out here in Southern California? And don't get me started on them ugly ass cigarette smoking fans in Vegas. They don't even properly recognize and show me the love and respect that I deserve being in the ring with it. I grace them with my presence, and you know, it's not enough for them apparently. They boo me, they they, they spit at me, they call me names, little kids sticking the middle finger at me. That's what they teach people in Vegas. That's not right. They stick middle fingers and stuff like that. It's disrespectful. Nah, you, they you don't understand. The trip down, took the trip down to Las Vegas. They should have given you the credit you were doing. They should have bought all my merchandise. They should have bought me drinks at the bar. They should have begged for me to come back. I might never come back. I might just take this championship and go do whatever I want with it somewhere else. I might take it to Puerto Rico. Might take it to Mexico. Might take it to the East Coast. I don't know. You could take it to New Japan now, right? I could take it to New Japan. Partnered up with Team Filthy and Team Filthy, Tom Lawler, Rest Coast Wrecking Crew, Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs, and the big, most feared, crazy son of a gun, Kratos. J.R. Kratos. I heard the rumors. Yeah. I heard people saying they think it was Tom Lawler under the mask. I heard people saying they think it was Slice Boogie. Or Papo Esco under the mask that I had to get help from my outside source. You think I'm going to sit here and tell you who it was? Does that make any sense? I wouldn't. All right, then, Gerald. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we're on the same page. Now, nah, yeah, heck, my uh, my best moves when I was in amateur wrestling was when the referee was looking the other way. Gerald, Gerald, listen, nobody here um, yeah. is listening to Las Vegas Wrestling Scene Confidential to hear you talk about your amateur wrestling days, Gerald. They're absolutely not. They're not. Okay, I wanted to ask. I think a lot of people watching this, they're familiar with you initially from AEW. That's right. And I think the biggest thing that is really a huge credit to you, because you went ahead and bet on yourself and mm -hmm. left. And since then, win, win, win. Well, what I mean, I wouldn't, necessarily say that, I wouldn't necessarily say I left AEW. You know, there definitely was, you know, a, a mutual... Uh, a split, you know, I had some maturing to do. I had a lot of things that I needed to work on. You know, they loved me there. I was having amazing matches with guys from Kenny Omega, Moxley, Ray Phoenix, Cage, the list goes on and on. You know, Konosuke Takeshita, you know, I was, you know, AW Dark, AW Elevation was my home for a while. Right. Almost had a great a run on Dark and Elevation. Yeah. 
And, you know, um, there were certain things that needed me to work on, which I understand. You know, I was wilding out. I was partying. I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. It okay. was my first time getting a taste of what real wrestling money looked like, real wrestling uh, uh, notoriety looked like. And I was just a loose cannon with it. You know, I learned these last two years. I've been growing a lot, maturing a lot. Um, so whenever that time comes back around, I'll be ready. But, yeah, I did. You know, after that, after that, you know, I went on to MLW. And MLW World Tag Team Champ with Slice Boogie. Went to Puerto Rico, became IWA World Tag Team Champ with Slice Boogie. In Puerto Rico, we was dual champs. We had both belts. And I came to United Wrestling Network at the same time. I was United Wrestling Network World Tag Team Champion. Now I'm the United Wrestling Network World Heavyweight Champion. You know, I'm the WWE SoCal Champion and the new FSW No Limits Champion. I'm just getting started, baby. Yeah. How are you managing all the different federations at once? You know, I don't know. I, I kind of just take it from one week into the next. You know what I'm saying? One mm -hmm. city to the next. One beautiful mommy to the next. That's just mm -hmm. how I live my life. Who's been the biggest, I don't know, biggest inspiration in you in branching out like this? Because the easy yeah. thing to do would be to stay in that one place, be comfortable, mm -hmm. and say, hey, I, I'm okay. I'm doing good. I'm having good matches. But, well, you know... You I push the that, envelope to get some wins, get some titles. Absolutely. I think that the military taught me that. I think the Marine Corps taught me to never get complacent, never be comfortable where you're at, always be willing to grow, always really be willing to adapt, you know, yeah. train, work hard, never be the, the 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 smartest man in the room, never be the richest man in the room, never be the strongest man in the room. That's how you get better, you know. You, you got to get out of that comfort zone, out of that complacency. Complacency kills is what we say. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of just, you know, put in the work. I know what I want. I know I'm good at what I do, you know. Um, I don't think I get enough credit. You know, I think I'm underrated and overhated. And honestly, I think that, you know, people need to start recognizing how just how good I am, both in the ring, outside the ring, on the mic, you know what I'm saying? In the group, yeah. in the faction, in the tag team, as a singles wrestler, I could do it all, baby. Well, you got the proof. The belts are the proof, right? It is. <laughs> it's my baby right here. It's the World Heavyweight Championship. It's my new baby right here. No Limits Champion. This is my other baby right here. VW SoCal Championship. You know, I think I want some more belts, though, you know. I think I want MLW's World Heavyweight Championship. You know, I got... That Harry's would be the big one, right? Yeah. Because that would be a really bad start to 2023 for Hammerstone. It would be. He just you know? dropped the FSW Heavyweight title to he Ice Williams. Ice, 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 Ice. Yeah. Ice. Same Shout card. A couple matches later. Yeah, and then boom, meets me in... Tijuana, Mexico, where they love me. I say that very sarcastically so much. Danny Limelight versus Alex Hammerstone for the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. I think that belt would look a lot better on me than it would on Hammerstone. It would be another good That's, belt to add to my collection. It's I a nice, impressive belt. I in MLW for a while. I think the last time they see me in MLW was maybe May, May, April, May time frame. It's been almost a year. What better way to come back than to win the world title in front of 5,000 screaming fans who drink way too many Modelos and stay up way too late at the daughter's quinceanera parties. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Go over there, put Hammerstone to sleep, walk out to the MOW World Heavyweight Champion. I think that'd be a great way for me to start the month of February, actually. That'd be an awesome well, start. I'll do, I'll, if I win, if, if, if things go the way I plan and I win the World Heavyweight Championship, I'm going to do a sexy-ass Valentine's Day photo shoot. I'm going to have all my okay. belts. With some flowers and some chocolates. I know the Twitter go crazy for that. Yeah. Now, have you had a singles match with Hammerstone before? Never have I ever. I've been avoiding that nightmare pendulum like the plague. So what's the plan going against him? Beat his ass. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's a big, strong dude. I've been in the gym. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the gym benching 315. I don't think he weighs 315 pounds. You know what I'm saying? No. I don't hear Strong dude, I've been in the gym and getting my weight up. I'm not the same 160 pound that he remembers. You know, I'm, at, I'm 190 pounds right now. I'm still fast as hell. I'm still smart. I'm still slick. I'm still sneaky. You never know who I'm, what I'm bringing with me to Mexico. So, Hammerstone, Papi, you've been the world heavyweight champion for a long time now. You know what I'm saying? Your hair is getting gray. You've been wrestling guys like EJ and shit like that. I'm pretty sure, you know, you ain't been in the ring with somebody like me in a long time. So, I hope you're ready. No, time for a change, right? It is. That belt will go good right here on this on this shoulder. I'll put this one over here somewhere and I'll add the other two world titles right here on my on my shoulders. And I'll put these two boys right here on top of each other just like this. 
No, the world titles have to go up higher, right? Have to. They have to. And then, boom. Defending that championship, this the one right white here. rhino, Clark Connors. The wild rhino, Clark. Listen, Clark's one of my biggest rivals. Goes back to 2020 in New Japan Strong, Lions Break Crown Tournament. In the finals, a match of the year contender, Danny Limelight, Clark Connors. And Clark got the best of me. Barely, but he did. And since then, Clark has done amazing things in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's mm -hmm. finally broken out of those little black thongs that they wear. And now he's running around with all this fancy gear. He's in the gym. He's looking great. He's having great matches. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So have I. I've been doing my damn thing, too. And I've actually beaten Clark before. He's going to say I used brass knuckles to win. He's going to make all these excuses. But the fact of the matter is, I did what needed to be done. The score is tied 1-1. Tuesday, February 7th in Irvine at the Improv. Poppy's home. We defended this bad boy against the Wild Rhino. You know what? There's a reason why rhinos are extinct or going extinct. Or on the not many of them. List. There's not many left. And there's going to be one less rhino left when I'm done with Clark on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Strong. Now, hey, talking about strong, getting involved in New Japan strong. How's that been? How have you liked being involved with New Japan wrestling? It's been a wild ride, man. You know, teaming with Tom, you know, and the rest of the Filthy Crew, you know, it's been great. I've been having some of my, my favorite moments in wrestling, just being able to travel and see, you know, all these other cities I've never been before, wrestling in front of bigger fans, different fans, um, really getting that experience in that Cerulean Blue Ring, you know, just waiting for my chance to go across the water into actual Japan and wrestle in front of those fans out there, show my poppy do. But, uh, you know, it's been, it's been a wild ride for sure. I've had a lot of fun. Tom's great. The boys are great. You know, we have we have uh, I will have a lot of fun in that ring for sure. And I feel like the fans see it every time we step out there. Well, and it's definitely, if not the highest, one of the highest levels in yes. professional wrestling being involved in New Japan. It is. And you know what? It's for a reason because the boys there, they don't play no games. No. So we need to see that match against Will Ospreay. Hopefully one day. You know, the United Empire, I feel like they're doing a lot of amazing things in wrestling right now. They're making a lot of waves. You know, uh, you know, Aussie Open, Will Ospreay, TJP, and them boys, man, they, they got something special going on out there. But one of my dream matches right now is definitely a one-on-one -on -one with Ospreay, so hopefully soon that shit happens. That'd be terrific. When do you think you may be able to get out to Japan? I don't know. That's not in my hands. Okay. I haven't, I haven't heard anything. There ain't been no talks. I don't want to. You know what I'm saying? Stir the rumor pot. I haven't uh -huh. heard nothing, so we'll see. No, that's fair enough. And then you also have a match, because you're busy too. Hammerstone's got a few titles going on, and he's only got one now. He doesn't have to worry about where he's going to carry the other belts right now. That's true. You hey. got a defense of the VWE title too. That's right. Against SoCal legend Little Cholo. You know, I, you know, I feel like they throw that word legend around way too loosely you know cholo may have been a legend back in the day I, I feel like right now cholo's over the hill you know he's been yeah. on the disabled list for the last year he's been riding mariachi locals coattails for the last four years when me on the other hand i've been doing big things in professional wrestling and the reason why i talk my shit i've been talking shit to cholo is because i expected more from a legend i expected more from someone who's been in the game as long as cholo has and the fact of the matter is i told him before and I'm gonna say it again. He's like old yeller. He's a good dog, you know, it's just it's just it's just gone way too it's time to get put down. And I feel like on February eleventh, this right here is gonna be the reason why I put Cholo down. And the wrestling world to thank me for it. Okay. Yeah. Well you got your social media post with the infinity gauntlet, so you can't get rid of any belts. You need to keep going, right? We'll see what belts next. We'll see. We'll see. I got a couple shows coming up, so hopefully we uh we do some more things, more championships, more money, more parties, more problems. That's what they say. Sure. More belts, less problems, right? Yeah. Checks Are you change. planning to planning to get back into tag teams, or pretty much locked hey, in on oh, singles oh, right now? Boy, Slice Boogie to get off the injured list. You know he's recovering. He's doing well. Shout out to Slice Boogie. Shout out to Papo Esco. You know the Bodega Boys doing their thing, and, I, and Slice mm -hmm. is a good recovery you know i was on the phone with him earlier we were talking some some shots he's, he's feeling good he's looking good he's in the gym you okay. know, once, 
He gets back on his feet. We're going to do what we do best. We might add the United Wrestling Network World Tag Team Championships, too. Just have all the belts. Go back to Puerto Rico. Sabio, give me a call. Go back to Puerto Rico, take the IWA Tag Team Championships. Go back to Puerto Rico, take the IWA World Heavyweight Championship. Might as well, right? Yeah. And that's a great territory, too. The East Coast. You know, I ain't been on the East Coast in a little while. We go see some of them East Coast territories, some East Coast promotions. Mm -hmm. See what's going on over there. You know, I'm down for whatever, man. Native New Yorker, right? That's right. Brooklyn born gotta, and raised. Got to get back down to New York. Life until I left. Yeah. Be cover the whole country, and then you can worry about going internationally. That's true. I want to go to Canada. I ain't never been okay. there. I want to go to uh, the UK as well. Never been there. I think that'll be fun. I don't know if they're ready for me, though. I don't know yeah. if they're ready to party the way I party, and I don't know if they're ready to throw down the way I like to throw down, so... Uh, I want to see it. Though. I, know, I know a few people out there in Canada. I know a few people out there in the UK. So I'm with whatever. I got my passport. I'm ready for whatever. Now, I know Conan used to be the manager for you guys in 5150. How about taking a trip up to AAA? That'd be good, too. You know, I, I, I talked to Conan not too long ago. You know, I'm waiting to hear back. See what's up. You know, he, I know last last I saw him, he was recovering from, you know, surgery and stuff like that. So I'm mm-hmm. glad he's doing better. I'm glad he's feeling good. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready whenever Conan calls, you know. He's a busy man. He got a lot going on right now with AAA, so hopefully yeah. AAA bring Poppy out. How much did it, how much were you able to learn from working with Conan? I mean, one of the greatest luchadors ever. Yeah. Um, it was a good time. Man. I learned a lot. You know, I, I love the way he thinks. I like the way he stra- strategizes his mindset for the business. Um, he definitely, uh, you know, helped me and Slice Boogie a lot, as well as bringing in guys like Homicide and Hernandez. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, into the mix, you know, with the fifty-one fifty run we did at MLW. Um, I think I think that it was a good learning experience. It was a good time. I had a lot of fun, and you know, ready to do more. Absolutely. Now, where have you gotten the most response from the fans? Where have you picked up the most following on your socials? Uh, it could be a mix between a, you know AEW. Really, when I was with AEW, I think that's when a lot of wrestling fans started following me. Um, the craziest re- uh, thing I remember was I was in Hawaii with this chick for her birthday for a week, and we went swimming with dolphins and stuff. And when we got back on the boat and got back to land, I was walking off the dock with her, and somebody was like, Limelight. And she turned around, and I turned around, I said, Did they say my name? And she was like, Yeah, they're calling you. It was some random dude in Hawaii who watched my match with, on elevation with Jungle Boy or something like that. Okay. He uh, wanted a picture and shit. That was cool. You know, like a lot of people know me from AEW. New Japan as well. Um, and then like in the SoCal scene, you know, around here, just really from the, uh, a lot of the SoCal shows, United Wrestling Network, you know, one time I was at the gas station pumping gas and somebody came up to me and wanted a picture because they were a United Wrestling Network fan. You know, this was before, okay. this was I was the tag champion at the time. This was before this happened, so. Well, now I've just got the big belt to get more of that. Hopefully. And, hey, talking about AEW, I did see did a little vignette, little background piece. Did you teach hand-to-hand combat in the military? Yes. So uh, I was a, I was a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. Um, I was a Marine Corps drone instructor, um, and I was also a first-degree black belt martial arts instructor in the Marine Corps martial arts program. And I taught over uh, 400 Marines in the Marine Corps martial arts program from tan, gray, green, brown, and black belt. And that well, that's really that. keeping it real in hand-to-hand close, combat. Huh? Yeah, that's close quarters combat. A uh, mix of judo, jiu-jitsu, uh, weapons, uh, uh, armed versus unarmed, armed versus armed. So such as bayonet techniques, weapon techniques, pistol techniques, knife techniques, um, wow. uh, stand-up to takedowns, grappling, ground fighting. But the thing with the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, most most martial arts is self-defense. Marine Corps Martial Arts Program is teaching to kill in the situation of combat. Mm-hmm. So offensive martial arts. Yes. Which, how did that help you? when you left the military and you transitioned into pro wrestling? Helped me a lot. You know, it was good. For, for a while, it, it was one of those things where I needed to learn how to not take it to that level, you know, of mm-hmm. really, you know, dismantling and, and, and potentially causing serious bodily harm to somebody in the ring. Um, but yeah, the, now you're just going for the three count. Yeah, now I'm just going for the three count, whereas before I was going for the – for the finish going you know? for the kill shot yeah i was, I was going to hear that that finishing voice you know what i'm saying like, mm-hmm. like it's a game of combat or something like that marine corps, yeah. marine corps training is 
the most intense training I've ever done in my life. Um, from going through boot camp in 13 weeks and then becoming a drone instructor and teaching people how to be Marines. So when they went to boot camp, I was the one screaming at them, training them, pushing their bodies to the limits. And then being a Marine Corps martial arts instructor, teaching them how to, you know, kill somebody with their hands. Sure. That's about as intense as you get. I think so. Yeah. But that that's really interesting because that gives you a unique, a unique skill set, right? Because there's no questioning, you know, and say, hey, man, he, he's legit. I mean, there's yeah. I mean, people are gonna want to test. Yeah, people are gonna say what they want to say. They're gonna think what they want to think. You know, I, I think that like you, you never really know. You know, you never really know until you're in a situation. Um, for, fortunately, I, I've never, never personally had to kill anybody. You know, I, yeah. I've never, never took it to that point. Um, but I, I think it's one of those situations where, like, one day, you know, someone's gonna fuck around and find out. Hopefully not, but, but you never yeah, know. What hopefully doing. not. Especially with the way the world's going right now. For me, it's better to know it and not need it than to need it and not know it. 100%. Sure. Absolutely. I'm very disciplined, man. Like, I know I know people see me, they see this party. I'm, you know, I like, to, I like to party. I like to be around beautiful women. I like to have a good time. But I train very hard. Mm -hmm. I train very intensely. Um, and I'm super disciplined. I don't start fights in the clubs. I don't look for problems in the streets. I try to de-escalate shit to, by all means until yeah. I absolutely cannot. When I was younger, in my early 20s, it was different. You know, I was a little wild and reckless. At like, my age, now I'm 31, I got an eight-year-old daughter. Like, you know, yeah. I'm chilling, you know? Like, I, I just need it, and I'll have it. Then I, I'd, rather, I'd rather be able to do that if I need to, you know, be able to protect my family, protect, protect yeah. my loved ones and stuff like that. Well, the military teaches you discipline, right? Yes. And then you take it over to the... Professional the sweet science of the ring, and, and then you look. get the belts. That's right. Well, hey, let's get you one more belt. What's this? The LVWS Confidential Wrestler of the Week. Go yeah. The championship round. That's a Just ask you a few quick questions. Right around here. Yeah. Love, love that. Wrestler of the Week. Let's add that. Wrestler to of the week. week. Champion of the Week. Champion of now, the hey, Week. First question. What professional wrestler has been the most influential to you? That would be Eddie Guerrero and The Rock. Okay. What about them? I mean, you know, when you look at The Rock's charisma, his electricity in the ring, the way that he was so captivating on the microphone. When I talk on the microphone, I try to embody that 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 energy. I try to make sure people are listening. You know, he had, he had all the cool catchphrases and stuff like that. He knew how to make people care about a match. And then Eddie Guerrero, just his body language, the way he moved, his intensity, how everything had a purpose, you know. And just the suave, the poppy shit, that comes from yeah. Eddie Guerrero, you know, definitely inspired by Eddie. Rest in peace, Eddie Guerrero. Absolutely. Oh, I've, been hey. ring, I've been in the ring with Chavo a few times now. I've done Vicky's podcast, and, and you know, they, they always show me love. And, they, they you know, a couple, couple times now they, they've compared me to Eddie, and that's just an honor in itself, you know, to hear it from yeah. his family. Uh, you can definitely see the influences. Absolutely. Can only hope to be as good, half as good as Eddie, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, that's a great call. Now, hey, uh, outside of Will Osprey, because we mentioned him, mm -hmm. who do you want to wrestle the most that you haven't yet? Oof. Man. That I, that I haven't wrestled. Ibushi. Okay. Kota, Kota Ibushi. Um, Ricochet. Thing right now, those would be like the two at the top of my head, and then, and then you know, obviously, like you know, Roman Reigns, mm -hmm. one day, Melo, another guy I want to get in the ring with, um, Hiromu would be somebody else on my list. Quite a few good ones there, Jericho. I want to wrestle Jericho, that would be Nate. Well, I just, I just love how Jericho has been able to, to just continuously grow throughout the years like he's getting better with age it feels like you know he's like he's yeah. like, i know he's he's like less champion and he talks about the mm -hmm. bubble but he's like he's like a fine bottle of wine it just gets better you know as the longer he stays in the game different you know? personalities different like, types of matches able to stay on tv he's able to stay consistent he's able to do that and not only that but like elevate people around him i think that's that's incredible not many people are able to do that well, and having the matches he's having at 50, right. 
two years old, I believe. Some people can't have those matches at 22 years old. No, no, so, it's insane. Because the older you get, the more everything hurts. Yeah, he's doing great. He looks good too, man. That's, that's somebody else that I put on my list that I want to wrestle. You know, hopefully, I get a chance to before before he's he's finally done with, done in the ring, whenever that may be. Really? Where he's going, you'll be there for another ten years. You know, he may be like Sting and Muda and still going at sixty two. Absolutely. Awesome. Now, hey, where do you see yourself? At the end of the year, oh, I'm on TV somewhere. I don't know where. I don't know if it's AEW. I don't know if it's WWE, NXT, Ring of Honor, Impact. But I need to be. I need to be somewhere. I, I love, what I'm, doing. I love what I'm doing right now, but I, I need to be back on your regular scheduled programming every week. We need limelight and the spotlight on That's the right. national stage. On a national stage, absolutely. Hopefully Absolutely. Japan. I'm in Japan for a little yeah. bit, you know. We'll see. It's a great stepping stone. You get there, you can go anywhere, right? Yep. And then, who's been your favorite opponent so far? Man, you know, I had a I had a really good match with Kanosuke Takeshita. It was one of my favorite matches ever. Um, I had a great world title match with Jordan Clearwater. It was a different kind of match than people I used to see me wrestle which is why I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, Clark Connors is always a good opponent. TJ Perkins is always a good opponent. Um, Ray Phoenix is always a good opponent. You know, I think, that, you know, right. Moxley, I had a, some, some great matches with Moxley as well. So, yeah, those would be the ones on top of my head. Oh, you know who else is, is a name that probably people won't expect to hear? Shane Haste from TMDK. I had some great matches with him as well. Okay. Terrific. And, of course, there'll be some great matches coming up. Because yeah. looking to add a belt right here, MLW against Hammerstone, longtime Las Vegas champion. So it could be another big week for Danny Limelight. Let's hope so, baby. Let's hope Restart so. Starts 2023. I got a chance to retain this title Tuesday, win Hammerstone's belt Friday, and then retain this one Saturday. Sounds like a busy week for me. That does, absolutely. Heck. It's a great start to 2023. Yep. And then you only need two more belts and you can fill up that whole gauntlet. You'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Danny, thanks for taking a little bit of time. I know it's been a busy week. Congratulations on the No Limits title. And I know there's a lot of Las Vegas fans that will uh, dislike this, but best of luck against Hammerstone for the MLW Heavyweight Championship. Yep, they can hate it, they can, they can love it. Whatever they choose to do, they can't stop it. That's right. Just to beat a man, you got to beat the man, right? That's what they say. Absolutely. Well, hey, thanks for stepping in the ring tonight. New episodes of LVWS Confidential every Wednesday on YouTube. Like, subscribe. And until the next time we're in the ring, thanks again.